Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Justin. I live in Nashville. I play guitar on songs. I also bought this sweet telly from Uncle Larry. I bought a few guitars from Uncle Larry over the years. This is the most recent purchase. I went over to check out a Guild Starfire that he was selling. When he told me he was selling it, I remember seeing him use it on lots of things, uh, seeing him use it when we'd work together. I thought he was asking a really good price for it. So I was like, yeah, I'll take it. And then while I was there, <laughs> he goes, hey, I, I got something else. You, you just come check this out. I'm like, oh gosh, what am I getting myself into? So he goes and pulls this uh, old tweed case out and I'm like, dang it. And I, I'd been following along his channel periodically just looking at videos and I had seen him play this guitar on a video and I'll link it in the description and I remember thinking man that thing sounds amazing like everything everything Tom plays sounds great because he's great right but there's levels to the guitar too you know that's in his hands at the time and I, I thought that that telly sounded really cool and I thought it was weird that it was a white guard with sort of a yellow butterscotch finish well, that's the deal. It's a body-only refin, right? He told me to take it with me and check it out for a little while. And I, sh I mean, I'm glad I did, you know. I was thinking I shouldn't do this at the time. <laughs> but, you know, I had some cash and I had just some money piling up in Venmo. And inflation was starting to get really bad. And I was thinking, okay, all this money I just have sitting here is kind of losing purchasing power. And how many more 55 tellies are they making? Zero. They aren't making any more of them. And this, uh, I got it home and I started playing it and I was like, man, I have so many reissue tellies. I have a Jeff Sin, I have a Dana Caster, I'd play, I've played a million Fenders. Um, I've played Greenwich Village, um, so many guitars, K-Line, Nash, whatever, Don Grosh, Tom Anderson, all of them. And they're, they're all great. They really are. They're, I've had a million new tellies that weren't anything resembling a dud, you know, they're great guitars, but none of them have what this has. And it just goes to show to me that whatever it is that makes a really great vintage guitar really great, we haven't figured that out. Um, it's probably a combination of several things, the age of the wood, the fact that uh, maybe it was slower growth wood, uh, just time itself, is a factor that we can't replicate. We can in the appearance, right? We can make it look and, and sort of feel broken in, but man, everything just jumps off of this guitar. It's it's uh, extremely lively. Every time I hand it to another guitar player, first of all, they're like, whoa, this is super lightweight. And it really is. I mean, it's, it's a six pound guitar. I'm, I doubt it's lighter than that. And it's a funny story. I, I showed it to a steel player I was on a session with, this guy named Steve Henson. I love Henson. He's a sweetheart. He's a great player. He's a great guitar player and a pedal steel player. He has a mid-50s telly that's kind of a boat anchor. It's it's heavy. It sounds really awesome, but it weighs a, it weighs a lot. And he picked this up, and he's he is country as dirt. I'm going to do an impression of him, and it's not going to be any good. He goes, well, that's lighter than one of Martha White's biscuits. <laughs> and so... He has nicknamed it The Biscuit, and so that's what I call it now. It's The Biscuit. And every time I see him, every time we're working on a session together, he goes, did you bring The Biscuit? I was like, man, you know I don't go anywhere without The Biscuit. So that's that's what it, it has become known as, affectionately, The Biscuit. So the the neck, it's it's a vintage um, seven and a quarter inch radius, but Greg Boros at Groon radius the frets, refretted it, and everything he does just feels absolutely incredible. And it has become my favorite feeling neck. I have tellies and strats with, with sort of a flatter radius, like a nine and a half, or maybe some of them are compound nine and a half to 12 or to 14 or whatever, you know, that just means that it sort of flattens out as you get higher up the neck. And this thing, all the way up and down, is so comfortable. It's it's the perfect, quintessential 1955 neck shape. It's it's a soft V. It's not very deep. Uh, it's a little smaller than the early early fenders, like the the 51 and 52. 
those those felt like you were almost hanging on to the wrong end of a baseball bat, which I think is cool, you know. But this is just ultra comfortable. Uh, these tuners are repros. I've got the originals in the case. I've got the original cover, and I think there's hang tags in the case too. Um, but it's just a killer, killer guitar. So I've got it. First of all, here it is unplugged. Again, it's a whole step down, so it probably sounds a little different. But it really, I mean, even acoustically, every time, every guitar player that I tell, like, hey, check this out. I play a chord on, and they're like, whoa, and they'll play, play a bit, and they're like, wow, that just kind of ruined all my tellies, <laughs> unless they have a really great old one as well. So um, I'm, I'm running into the Analog Outfitters Sarge. I've got a little slapback. Got my throwback overdrive boost on. And I mean, it just sounds ridiculously great. that low string. So I, I've got a song up. Um, it's something that I've done and I've turned in, but I just wanted to sort of play a bit on this guitar because it's so growly and snarly. And the, the bridge pickup has this sort of bloom and sustain with high gain that feels like an old PAF. It's really crazy to me. Um, the neck pickup sounds killer too. It's a little quieter than the bridge. The bridge is really close, you know, and there's there's something to be said for raising the bridge pickup of your telly and just having a nice, raunchy, aggressive sound. Um, this actually has vintage wiring too. I think I might have mentioned that already. Um, where the, the front position... That's just the neck pickup with uh, that giant, like... A big tone cap, you know, for jazz. What a great guitar. So yeah, I'm just going to play a little bit on this, uh, this outro of this song. You might recognize it from one of my previous videos. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I mean, it just, just rock and roll all day long. One more time, just because it's fun. One more time, just because it's fun. Super cool. When I was deciding to buy this guitar, I, I took a little bit of a peek under the hood, so to speak, and I basically just um, I loosened the neck plate enough to see the, the dates on the inside, and then I just wanted to see the control cavity, because it, 
you know, I noticed that this was original. I was like, I wonder if all the solder joints are original. And I opened it up and I found something super cool inside of it. So check this out. All right. I hope you guys are going to be able to see this. I was checking inside the control cavity and I found something super cool. I thought this was amazing. Okay, I mean, that looks completely original, right? <laughs> I haven't changed a thing. Um, I, I guess maybe one of the pickups has been soldered. Resoldered, maybe. Kind of looks, looks potentially. Well, that goes to the jack. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, these are original pickups to the guitar. But check out what's inside of here. This is pretty cool. The original... Final assembly uh, tape here. It's really hard to read what it says, but it says Gloria 21655. So Gloria was the final check, final assembly, final setup lady at the Fender factory. And she signed off on this guitar on February 16th, 1955. And she signed a little piece of masking tape and put it in the control cavity. I think that was typical, and I think a lot of these old guitars should have these in them, but they don't. Uh, what makes this particularly interesting is that this is a refin. It's a body refin. So whoever did the whoever did the body refin, right in '55, they were antique white, um, and this has been refinished in a natural sort of almost butterscotchy color, and. Whoever did the refin, whenever it happened in the guitar's past, they were careful enough to delicately remove this uh, signature, this autograph from Gloria, and put it back. That's super cool. Um, I wonder how many guitars she signed off on that left the factory. I wonder how much she did. Did she do the final setup? Did she play through it, make sure that it was within their specs for playability and did she tune them up and put the hang tags on them? Did, was she the one that did the soldering and wired it? I don't know. But uh, I thought that was really awesome. I thought you might think that was cool. So there you have it, my 55 Telly. I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. I know Uncle Larry is not very sentimentally attached to guitars. He buys and sells all the time. Everybody in this town's bought something from him. You know, I have several guitars that I've bought from him. And... Uh, for me, I just, I try to find keepers, you know? Uh, I play something and I really connect with it and I'm like, okay, I, I think that's going to be the one in my stable, you know? And I, I have a few other tellies, like I said, but this is my main one for sure. Um, so thanks for checking it out. Uh, if you don't subscribe, you should. I do lots of videos on how to record guitar, how to be the kind of guitar player that other non-guitar playing musicians want in their bands, <laughs> you know? Because think about it from a singer and a bass player and a drummer's perspective. Like, they don't just want the guy that's going to solo all the time and sort of just play, just play, you know, simple rhythm guitar that covers the changes until it's time to solo and then shred their brains out, you know? They're, they're looking for someone who's creative, someone who's listening to them not just themselves. So that's that's kind of what I'm trying to do with this channel. I, I thought there was a bit of a gap in the YouTube guitar offerings. So hope you have a great day. See ya.